Good afternoon, everybody. Um, terrific to have you all join us today for the biannual IS updates with the ISC. My name is Jane Nichols. I'm the Chief Engagement and Development Officer, um, and I'm re really, really pleased to be representing the organisation today with you. Happy International Women's Day. Um, we're all in our colours here today to uh, celebrate and uh, um, I hope that each of you are doing your bit to enjoy this celebration. Before we get underway, I would uh, like to um, acknowledge the country, the Infrastructure Sustainability Council, uh, acknowledges the traditional custodians of the land on which we meet today. I acknowledge their deep connection to land, water and culture, and pay my respect to elders past, present and emerging. Today, I'm on Nipa Luna Land. Okay, so we have a really uh, full agenda for you. I, I'm committed that we fit, we complete at 1.30 this afternoon, um, but a lot to go through. First of all, Ainsley Simpson, our CEO, would like to um, make her own welcome to you. Unfortunately, Ainsley can't join us today, but she is coming to you by video. Um, we will have a bit of an update from her and then move to uh, uh, ratings and delivery to get a, an update on the, what, the work that the team is uh, undertaking currently. On to a technical update. We'll then look at our IS Essentials pilot and the work that the water advisory group are undertaking, and then into learning and capability. And finally, membership and events, advocacy, and of course, uh, closing comments. There is an opportunity for all of you to submit your uh, questions through the Q&A. So please um, go ahead and do that at any, at any point through the uh, webinar, and we'll endeavor to answer as many questions as we can today, but for any uh, that we haven't got to, we'll certainly follow up with you uh, soon after the web webinar is completed. Good afternoon, everyone. Tena Koto Katoa. Welcome back for another year of impact. It's hard to believe that it's already March. It's been a very long year. Not unlike 2019 and 2020, when Australians were shocked by the extremes of fire and floods, the people of Aotearoa are living through the aftermath of flash flooding and cyclone Gabriel. I reflect on why it feels a little bit more like May than it does March, because why matters? And because for those of us in infrastructure sustainability, finally, our why has recency and resonance. Across our sector, our work is now both urgent and important, because for too long, the focus has been on what had immediacy and was fiscally urgent, meaning that we postponed, deferred, and denied what's important. This month, for me and the team at the IC, resilience is top of mind. Crises, be they climate or conflict, near or far, crises amplify existing inequalities. So today, in particular, International Women's Day, I would like to honour all the people on the call that live and practice fairness. At the heart of this year's theme, Embrace Equity for a Gender Equal World, there is one core cool behavior to cracking the code. Treat others as you want and deserve to be treated. So for us in infrastructure, keep your focus on what's important and what's urgent and redefine inclusion as innovation because difference 
is the source of all innovation. And as each of you go about your work of creating positive change in infrastructure, I say to you, be visible, be different, and above all, be fair. Enjoy today's IS update. I look forward to seeing and hearing your feedback. And for now, go well, stay fair. Good afternoon, everyone. I can't see the screen slides up. I'm not sure if they are visible for everyone else. Um, my name is Alan Buckley. I'm the general manager for ratings and delivery. Uh, here we go. Thanks, Danielle. Very briefly, I'd like to acknowledge the Turrbal and Jagera people and the country which I'm joining you from, uh, Brisbane, Queensland. Um, and I'd also like to acknowledge International Women's Day and to all of the fantastic women that I've had the opportunity to work with over the years and who have influenced my life. Um, it's a great day to reflect on that and to think about how we can drive forward to improve equity and uh, accessibility of opportunities. Today, I'm going to talk to you very briefly about the ratings and delivery team and some of the activities that we've been up to in that team and also um, how we're progressing um, uh, new tools and um, options for delivering sustainability outcomes across infrastructure projects. So I'll go to the next slide, please. Uh, we have continued to expand our team over time, and this is a, the current ratings team, the technical team, um, have a slide later on uh, identifying their team. Um, we have project managers and leads across New Zealand, Victoria, Western Australia, and New South Wales, um, but their responsibilities extend to the whole of Australia. Um, we also have um, increased our project manager cohort, um, and we have um, a, a larger number of project managers now in New South Wales, Victoria, and New Zealand. Um, in relation to the team, uh, I haven't put any names up there. I'm sure you can identify um, those project managers that are working with you. Um, but I'd like to make a few acknowledgements um, uh, while we're in this meeting. The first is Ben has passed three years. Ben Wade, who's a regional lead for Victoria, Queensland and the ACT, has um, completed three years just this week with the ISC. Declan um, last week saw three years. Declan Collins is the, the regional lead for Western Australia, uh, South Australia and the Northern Territory. Luke Summit, who is a project manager in Victoria, has gone past three years. Asim Nizam, who is our regional lead for New South Wales, has just recently celebrated his two-year anniversary. And Ty Momberg, our technical manager, who's not on this slide, but um, will be speaking to you next about the technical work plan, has just passed two years with the team. What we're seeing is a greater level of stability in the team with increasing numbers is increasing the amount of support that we can offer to you all as you go through your ratings projects. Can I jump to the next slide, please, Danielle? Just very briefly on the work that we have on at the moment um, and how we're expanding across different industries. Uh, currently, we have 231 projects registered um, with a, a total capital expenditure of $250.6 billion. We're working with all of those projects to help them achieve their sustainability outcomes. As has historically been the case, we've got um, the majority of that work within the road and rail sector, um, but we are expanding into ports, airports, a greater number of water projects, energy and social projects. Um, we're still seeing the majority fall within the design and as built, um, but we are seeing an expansion of um, take up of our tools um, related to planning, operations, and IS essentials. We now have projects registered across all states and territories um, and New Zealand, um, including Tasmania, um, South Australia, uh, and the Northern Territory. You could jump to the next slide, please. Um, just very briefly on our version and tool uptake within the, um, the ratings and delivery space and what, what we offer. Um, 
there's been a continued uptake of um, our planning tool as we go through our planning review to to implement a two, our version 2.1 planning tool, which Ty will, will speak to about. A lot of you may have been involved in the stakeholder engagement, but we've still got a, a large number of um, planning projects underway across the across the country with a focus on Western Australia um, and new port projects coming online to do their planning readings um, out in the West. We're seeing a greater uptake of version 2.1 design and as built registrations across um, Victoria, Western Australia, New South Wales and New Zealand. Um, and I'll come back around to uh, the transition to version one, uh, 2.1 from 1.2. Uh, operations ratings continue to be registered um, as people look to build in sustainability outcomes to the continuing operations of assets once the design and construction has been completed. And um, that's across all states in the Northern Territory. And finally, um, uh, we have uh, our IS Essentials pilots still running, and Monique will speak briefly about those, where we're, we've got a, a number of pilots that are significantly um, contributing to the, the, the development of the IS Essentials tools as, by going through those pilots and providing feedback to the ISC on how they best fit for projects that sit with under the $100 million mark. Finally, um, and a large number of the people in this um, in this webinar will be aware that we're looking to transition um, from our version 1.2 design and as-built tool to the version 2.1 design and as-built tool. Uh, uh, we have had ongoing consultation across the sector and with our partners over the past 18 months. Um, the version 2.1 tool has been available to the market for some time and the ISC is working towards a transition date and a sunsetting clause for version 1.2 design and as built registrations with the intention to not take any further 1.2 registrations beyond December 2023 or the end of this year. And with a move to only accepting version 2.1 design and as built um, uh, registrations in the new year. We have been, um, and we continue to work with stakeholders and partners to ensure that that transition is smooth. Um, and we'll all acknowledge that as we are driving towards greater sustainability outcomes over time, we want to ensure that the benchmarks are moving with the industry and within the market, with the market to continue to drive that performance. If we could jump to the next slide, just very briefly, some recent projects that have registered um, in across version 1.2, 2.1 and um, program ratings essentials. And I don't, oh, there's one operations there. So um, just a, I won't go through them in detail or talk to each one, but there's some recent projects that have joined us. Um, if you are working on those projects, um, welcome, we look forward to engaging with you. Um, if you. If you haven't already been in touch with your project manager, they will be, um, uh, engaging with you to, to get the ratings process started. That's everything from me, um, and I'm handing over to Ty Realm Momberg from the, uh, the technical manager to talk you through the technical update. Thanks, Ty. Thanks, Owen. Welcome, everyone. Um, as Owen said, I'm Ty Momberg, and I'm the technical manager. If we could go to the next slide, please. Great, thank you. I'd like to start by talking you through five focus areas in the technical working work plan and highlight the key items that we are working on in each of these. So starting, oh, oh no, back, thanks. <laughs> starting with that first focus area, uh, rating tools, the development work we are doing on the IS essentials and IS planning tools are good examples of these. Uh, next or second is the focus area on support tools. One of the key items that we're working on is the digitalization of the IS materials calculator. So it's being digitalized to be more user-friendly and also to reach a wider market. The third area is data analytics and management. We understand that data is playing an increasingly important role within the ISC and also within the industry. And we're spending a lot of time working and thinking about this. Uh, technical governance is the fourth area of focus. And the technical working groups are a good example. Uh, and I have a slide dedicated to that later on. Lastly is the uh, general technical support and management. 
and that includes things like technical investigations and TCs and CIRs. Uh, next slide, please. Thanks. Um, as I said in the previous slide, the ICE planning to update is one of our key focus areas that we're working on right now. The review and update is progressing well with the implementation pathway well established and credits and categories being updated. We'd like to thank GHD, who are the technical support consultant that is working with the IC on this update. Uh, we'd also like to thank the planning technical working group who has provided fantastic feedback throughout the process. And lastly, thank you to the broader set of stakeholders who have been involved in the, uh, the progress update sessions. Next slide. Thanks. Uh, timeline. So in terms of timeline, we are working uh, to provide the technical manual for display in late uh, April 2023. And the detailed planning rating and separate strategic planning rating tools are to be formally released in the second half of the year. And then the strategic planning tool will be released as a pilot, as that is a new offering. Uh, next slide, please. Thank you. Technical working groups. Uh, so this is a key area of focus and the technical governance. The six TWGs on the screen were started in Jan uh, 2022 and are now well established and hard at work on specific work plan items as detailed in the slide. Some examples, I'm not going to talk through all of them, but just some examples. Uh, for example, the planning technical working group and essentials technical working group are helping to shape the new tools that are being developed. The design and as -built technical working group is exploring the ideas of templates and guidance. And lastly, the sustainable materials technical working group is investigating how to update the materials calculator from a technical perspective. Um, so onto the next slide for, for more details on that. Cheers, thank you. Um, so this is the item that the Sustainable Materials Technical Working Group have been helping to investigate. The current IS Materials Calculator can only accept EPDs, Environmental Product Declarations, that have been published to EN 15804 plus A1. But from early 2022, all EPDs are being published to EN 15804 plus A2 which cannot at this point be modeled in the, uh, the current materials calculator. And you can see from the slide, the vast differences between the plus A1 and plus A2 indicators, and the majority of these are not mathematically comparable. So the TWG has done a lot of good work in this space, and the IC now has a fee proposal to update the MATCALC to be able to model both plus A1 and plus A2 EPDs. Uh, we're currently looking for sponsorship to make this update happen. So please contact me if you'd like to be part of this journey. There are significant sponsor benefits associated with this, uh, including events for the sponsors and having your logo added to the materials calculator. So please do reach out uh, and get in touch. Next slide, please. Thank you. Another item that we've made a lot of progress on is the IS impact notes. The modern slavery impact note was published in December and a supporting video is now under development. A big thank you to the modern slavery coalition for their role in this. Uh, we are now working on a circular economy impact note and there is still an opportunity to partner with the ISC on this. So please do get in touch if you are interested. Uh, thank you. Rulings, as you can see, there have been a significant number of ruling registers that have been published since the last webinar in September 2022. And Rev 46 was published yesterday, so please look out for that on ISAP resources. Please do note the key items there on the right hand side, uh, especially there have been a number of clarifications around innovation and firsts and their timing. So please do look out for that. And also there's been really big rulings and important rulings on reverse calculated base case and base case accuracy. All of these are available on the ISAP resources, so please do check that out. Uh, last slide from me, thank you. Um, so this is just some additional highlights and information for you. 
The first item is the NELP fact sheets. These are fact sheets and tools that help projects implement the version 2.1 design and as build tool. Uh, these fact sheets are available on the ISAP resources page. And we've already had really good feedback regarding this. I think this is a very helpful tool for the industry. The next item is the IC technical governance framework. This was completed uh, late last year and is published on the IC website. Finally, we wanted to let you know that back copies of the IC new newsletters are now located on our website for you to use and reference. Uh, thank you very much for your time today. And I will now hand over to Monique. Thank you. Thank you, Ty. Um, yes, a warm welcome from me too. My name is Monique Ismail. I'm Head of Market Development at the ISC. And I would like to give you a quick update on IS Essentials and the Water Advisory Group. We move to the next slide. Yeah, so as most of you would be aware, um, IS Essentials is a ratings tool that we're developing specifically for projects under $100 million capex. And really pleased to say that we've got uh, 20 um, pilot projects on board now, um, which are, um, you know, as you can see, across a wide range of asset types. That's really great. Uh, also, um, CapEx range, the smallest being around $8 million and the bigger one is um, around $100 million. And we've also got regional um, variety. We've got um, many states in Australia and, and, and territories covered and also New Zealand. We are still onboarding projects until at least the end of the second quarter this year. So please reach out if you're interested in championing this um, new tool. Um, and the expected launch of the full tool is at the end of this year. Let me go back to the next slide. Thank you. And on the Water Advisory Group, an update here. Um, if this is the first time you're hearing about it, um, really the Water Advisory Group um, brings together um, lots of different players in the water sector, and we're really um, working together to find out how we can make sure that the IS uh, ratings tools really um, serve this specific sector. Um, we're bringing together proponents, um, water authorities, and, and consultants in this field. We go to the next slide. Um, at the moment, uh, the team um, has been working on really gathering feedback from water projects that went through the IS ratings process. Um, and as a next step, we'll also look at the technical manuals and see how the credits um, really apply to water. And if there's um, any feedback for the uh, ISC, then that will be shared by the group. Um, and then any the adjustments will be considered as well. Um, and then we're also going to work on uh, looking at the return on investment and how we can raise awareness for the tools as such. Um, we're starting to see a good amount of interest in what uh, the Water Advisory Group is doing. So um, we're building a broader community of practice of people who really want to be kept in the loop. So if that's something that you would be interested in, please feel free to reach out and we'll just add you to um, that circle and um, keep you in the loop of what's happening. Thanks. And with that, I'm handing over to Hayley. Thank you, Monique. And welcome, everyone. Um, I am Hayley Greaves, Head of Learning and Capability at ISC. Um, and in the next few slides, I'm going to take you through um, the learning calendar for the rest of this financial year um, and, and give you a, a quick overview of some of the speciality, should we say, training that we have um, on offer up until um, and including June. So we've got March, April, May, and June on there, and we've got our regular public facing courses, um, rating skills, um, um, IS version 1.2 design and as built, and 2.1 design and as built. So you'll notice there's a few arrows on there, and th those are um, the courses I'll be covering in a little bit more detail today. And so before we jump onto the next slide, I'll just look at RISE mentoring. As you can see, there's a piece there in March for RISE mentoring where applications will open. A piece there in April where applications will close. In May, there will be the program launch and sorry, the matches will be published and the program will launch. Um, and I'll jump into the next slide to tell you a little bit more about RISE mentoring. So we're extremely excited to share the official opening of applications for our second RISE leadership mentoring program. 
The programme is open to all ISD members and aims to develop sustainability as a key capability for future infrastructure leaders. It is, as mentioned, a leadership development programme and it matches established sustainability professionals who wish to further develop their leadership skills with industry leaders who would like to give back, uh, further develop their coaching and mentoring skills and stay connected with the next generation of executives. We had a highly successful programme in 2022 uh, with a few highlights displayed on the slide now. For more information and, and further details, as well as additional testimonials, you can go to the ISC website um, under the learning tab and rise mentoring. If you were, um, if you submitted an expression of interest, you'll be directly contacted by the RISE program manager on the 13th of March and invited to complete your application. Um, but if you didn't, you didn't get an expression of interest in not to worry, the applications will open to everybody else on the 15th of March. So just keep your eye open for any upcoming newsletters or, uh, um, or on our website for those application opening details. Um, there'll also be an information webinar held on the 21st of March at 11 a.m. to um, till 12 a.m. Sydney time, 12 noon, sorry, Sydney time. Um, so keep an eye out for details for that. If you're, if you're not sure, you're not quite ready to submit the application, I encourage you to attend the information webinar for. Um, the next course I'm going to touch on is leading culture change. Being able to communicate sustainability benefits um, only gets us so far. The next step is to embed sustainability um, and sustainability practices in all that we do and create a real culture of sustainability. So this short course will equip you with practical tools and techniques which can be applied immediately in your role um, as you then go on to lead culture change and shift that from asset creation to asset impact. The course is for those responsible for driving sustainability in their organization. Um, you may be facing barriers such as, such as lack of traction with leadership, or you want a little bit more detail or understanding of how to build an impactful business case and influence up. The course is also for HR professionals working to, uh, sorry, working in an organization that has sustainability commitments and they've been tasked with ensuring sustainability is embedded in culture. By joining us for this course, you'll have access to video interviews that, are, that were undertaken with four industry leaders on how they overcame culture change challenges and drove the sustainability agenda all the way to the top. Claire Gardner-Baines, expert um, infrastructure, culture change and reform consultant will be facilitating this course. Claire has successfully led culture change initiatives across a range of industries. Her recognized experience and infrastructure leadership development and coaching will support you in developing strategic foundations to drive sustainability outcomes. The QR code on the screen will take you to the relevant page on our website. There you can register or um, just watch our teaser video. And there's also a link there to a taster webinar that Claire facilitated in February. So I encourage you to take a look um, and share with your colleagues. The next course I'm gonna to touch on is IS for suppliers. And this training course has been developed to support in closing the gap in IS rating understanding between those who are undertaking the rating and suppliers of sustainable products and materials. The course explores how suppliers can communicate and evidence their value in the lead up to and during the tender process. Participants will walk away understanding common rating terminology and in which aspects of the rating suppliers can support to deliver and drive sustainability outcomes for the project. The course um, is not only for suppliers, um, if you're an organization, and you have a group of suppliers you work with frequently, um, and it's important that they understand the rating process and uh, specific aspects of the rating, for example, the procurement credits, um, I encourage you to share this information with them. Again, the QR code's on the screen now, and it will take you to the relevant page on our website. 
And finally, before I hand over to Jane, um, I just want to touch on our ISAP webinars. So we've had three webinars so far. Um, they're named at the bottom of the screen there. And they can all be accessed on our ISAP resources um, on IS Learn. The webinars, um, an hour in duration, have been cut into smaller chunks. So in total, there's 14 micro learnings there, um, you know, 15 minutes on um, credit summary forms or 15 minutes on materiality assessment. Um, it, it's up to you how you go and view them, but they're, they're all there ready for you now. We've had over those three webinars, 371 registrations. And off the back of those webinars, 28 topic suggestions. The QR code that's on your screen now, lots of QR codes here for you. Uh, the QR code that's on your screen now will take you to um, a suggestion form where you can put your suggestions in for what you would like to see included in our ISAP webinar series. Thank you. I'm uh, handing over to Jane Nichols now, who's going to take us through membership and events. Thank you, Hayley. Uh, I appreciate that. So, um, yes, I'd like to take you through uh, what's happening across both parts of the business. Um, we're very, very active at the moment, and I might get you to flip the slide, please, Danielle. Okay, yep, there we go. Um, I can very proudly say that across the ISC, we are very much practicing gender equality. What we're seeing here is um, a, little bit, a little bit of a counter position to the ratings team at the moment. Um, a, a lot of uh, female faces here, a team that uh, is growing quite rapidly at the moment. We're doing so much more work, so many uh, different areas that we're focusing on with our events, our publications, um, and uh, I hope that you're finding that the quality of work coming through is helping to inform your journey with the ISC. Um, I'll talk quite a bit about the marketing team as we go through the slides. Um, there are now three people on that team and they are doing an enormous job in providing opportunities for you to submit material to us so that we can profile your organisation, but we can also um, focus uh, quite overtly on some of the impact and innovation that you're making, looking at case studies and looking at leadership within your organisation that you'd like to promote. Um, thank you. Next slide. Since the, we, we run these uh, webinars twice a year and uh, since we last met, we have uh, brought on board a number of very significant members from right across the value chain. Um, each of these parties makes a substantial difference to the sort of collaborations that we can commit to uh, and also to the networking opportunities. So really delighted to see this group coming on board. Thanks, Danielle. Some of you who I have spoken to um, on a more individual level will have seen the next two slides. Um, it's really quite interesting to have a look at the full breadth of our um, membership. We break this up, as you can see, into subgroups. Uh, it's something that you won't necessarily want to focus on today. But for those of you who are keen to receive uh, this webinar content, have a look through here and you'll see um, that the breadth of coverage that we achieve uh, within each of the subsets is really quite substantial. And it just helps you to know that when you're uh, at one of our events um, or collaborating or wishing to collaborate, um, you can get a sense of which parties uh, might also be interested in who you'd like to meet. Thanks, Danielle. So on this, screen, on this screen, you're seeing our suppliers, um, operators, and then uh, the not-for-profit industry association uh, and small, medium enterprise space. So have a look at that when uh, you've got a bit more time. In terms of membership, there are 
six areas that uh, are most significant about what we do. Um, today is not the time to go into any of these in, in uh, significant detail, but if I can just reiterate each of them to you. The first of which is um, it's about being part of a community, about networking and engagement. And as you would know, there are multiple channels that you can engage with us, um, but we also create a vast amount of content for you to consume, whether that's our bi-monthly uh, newsletter on our website, our socials, particularly on LinkedIn, our annual impact report uh, and our major uh, events uh, in Australia and New Zealand and a significant event in Perth, as well as uh, a, a, a significant number of um, networking forums, ministerial roundtables and so on. If you've got particular interest in any of those areas, don't hesitate to contact, contact myself or any member of the team. With your membership, you categorically receive preferential pricing and access. Um, for a non-member, the differences, the difference in pricing is in the vicinity of 30 to 35% less for a member. So um, for those of you who might be on this uh, webinar today, just be conscious of that. And if you'd like to learn more, um, get in touch with us and we'd be happy to take you through that. Um, our members, as Haley has just uh, spoken to, have um, preferential access in terms of pricing to our vast knowledge, learning and capability area. Um, and again, Haley and her team will be happy to take you through that. In the advocacy space, we're doing, always doing a lot of work, uh, particularly in terms of uh, thought leadership. Uh, we're producing um, papers on a regular basis, often partnering uh, with our membership to create those papers. Uh, we're doing a great deal of work with government, both in New Zealand and Australia. And uh, as many of you would know, a couple of years ago, we launched the uh, Modern Slavery Coalition. Since that time, we have introduced another four coalitions, um, all of which are almost full, but there is uh, still some availability for those of you who might want to discuss that with you. It's a really significant opportunity to be involved in um, really defining key issues in whether it's circular economy, modern slavery, resilience, uh, or climate change. Uh, you have the opportunity to help define a key issue, develop a work plan uh, around that and go right through to implementation. Um, and we also, for our coalition parties, we look to um, give you some uh, additional benefits that really make your involvement, the expenditure you, you, you commit to, to really um, substantially profile you as part of the process. I supply, I'll talk a bit about that uh, in a moment. It's very much about, for those who don't know, it's our products and services that we um, list on our online um, directory and a really good opportunity, uh, particularly for suppliers to make sure that where their products are offering a significant uh, benefit from a sustainability perspective um, can focus that to uh, asset owners, delivery agencies, procurement departments who are looking to only use products that uh, are, make, are going to make a difference to their ratings and to the uh, ultimate outcome of their project. Uh, probably most of all, though, it's the leadership positioning that you achieve as a result of your membership. You will all receive, as members, if you haven't got this, please let us know. You should have a, um, an ISC membership. Uh, logo that you can place uh, where you wish to your collateral um, from a point of view of being able to showcase to those that you're communicating with that your standards are very much associated with driving uh, sustainability in all that you do environmentally, socially, culturally and economically. Thank you, Danielle. I mentioned um, right at the front of this webinar that we actively encourage you to submit content to us. Um, we have three portals uh, where we're 
uh, publishing material focusing on thought leadership, focusing on impacts or innovate, innovation that you're undertaking, uh, and also a really important one, profiling leadership within your organisation where you've got uh, individuals who are really pushing boundaries and making a difference. Uh, it's a great opportunity to recognise them through any one of our channels um, from a retention point of view, from just a pure perspective of acknowledging uh, their achievement and the value that it brings is a really important aspect um, for those individuals. And it's open to you. There are no charges for this. We do ask that you supply us with um, content that we can publish. We don't, uh, we don't write this for you, uh, but um, once assessed, we're very keen to make sure that we can uh, achieve this benefit for you. Thanks, Danielle. I supply, we'll kick straight into that, please. So the I supply directory, which I've mentioned before, um, just this is not new information, but if I can reinforce it, for those of you with products or services that um, will have a potentially, will have a, a positive impact on ratings credits, this is an opportunity for you to submit according to our application form, um, very specific detail, including case study material and uh, those uh, detailing those credits that you can influence and have that live on our website over the course of a year and, and of course beyond that if you wish to. Um, it's, a, it's an environment where if you update it quite regularly, you'll get more traction um, and you can list uh, by product or, or, or I should say, sorry, those using the directory can search by product or service, by location, rating type or by credit. And you'll see beneath um, uh, that bar that there are a number of case studies uh, being shown there. And those that rotate those case studies over time, it's really useful. Um, Daniel, if you just click again, you'll see that there is, uh, we provide you with a credit guide. So for suppliers or services, you can have this, have a look through this guide to see where your influence is likely to be greatest. Um, and it's all built off the back of the technical manual. So a really, really valuable resource um, and useful for services and products that would like to be put in front of um, those undertaking ratings. Thanks, Daniel. Um, this is more for those of you who are going to uh, look at this deck in a bit more detail later. Um, these are a few hints and tips that are really valuable uh, so that you optimise the performance of any listings that you undertake. Um, I would highlight too for our members that those of you who are um, have taken up our standard offering uh, with your membership you will get one or you do get one free listing per annum. And for those of you who took up uh, Value Plus, you get five free listings uh, every year. So uh, really worthwhile to take advantage of this. And uh, I encourage you to um, scan the QR code, QR code and you'll be directed straight to uh, iSupply and you'll see where you can um, get involved in this if you haven't already. Thanks, Danielle. And we'll flip into some of our um, upcoming engagement opportunities. Um, I had, a, I had an, a meeting this week actually with one of the major consultancies and I took them through um, our calendar for the rest of the year. Um, we can do that with any of you. We are, as I said earlier, really active in terms of the content that we're producing um, and making available to all of you. Um, if you want to go through that for an extended period of time, so through to the end of the calendar year or financial year, we can do that. But uh, just a bit of a view of what's coming out most imminently. Um, obviously, we've got today in there, but that's followed um, on the 14th of March with a sustainable finance information session, uh, a webinar following that, IS Essentials uh, information session. One of our big pieces, which I'll talk to uh, more fully in a moment, the WA Symposium, a one day event in Perth. Um, we have our first ever uh, networking 
and knowledge sharing event coming up in Hobart on the 13th of April. Our New Zealand conference will be, it has been scheduled and we're very much underway with this, 2nd and 3rd of May. It includes an ISAP day, the Connect conference and a dinner. And you'll see in uh, most of the markets, we have importantly, a knowledge share and networking event um, in, in most of our markets. Um, and for those of you who are, who are interested, we do always do the knowledge share and networking forums um, with a member partner. So if you're interested in hosting one of our events um, and uh, working alongside us in, in bringing that to an audience, we'd be happy to talk to you if, you're, if you'd like to. Um, we do have a date for our next Connect conference there in Australia. Um, I should say to you that the date listed of 18 to 20 of September is not an absolute at this stage, but what I can say to you is it will be in Melbourne and it will be either September or October. Um, so if we could just flip to the next slide, Danielle. A little bit more here on the annual WA Symposium. Um, as most of you would probably know, uh, WA is a really, really um, significant market in terms of the work they're doing to commit to sustainability and the sort of rating projects that are being lifted over time. Um, this one day event uh, is face to face. I've listed there some of the program highlights for you. Um, we are, ticket, ticketing is, uh, is open and um, we have a few sponsor opportunities left if you're interested. Um, so please don't hesitate to let let myself or the team know if you would like a, if you would like a conversation on that. If you'd like to exhibit, that's also an opportunity. And we look forward to having um, networking refreshments with you uh, at the culmination of the event on the fourth of April. We'll go to New Zealand. Um, New Zealand annual, annual conference. Um, I should have mentioned Waka Katahi, uh, um, our sponsoring, are our major sponsor in, in um, uh, New Zealand and in Perth. Uh, it is GHD and we thank them both for their commitment to what we're doing in each of these uh, significant occasions. So Auckland, May two and three, um, we have a full day ISAP day on May the 2nd. We're holding that at uh, Westpac CBD office. Um, I should mention to you that the event is uh, obviously, I would say, open to ISAPs, but we are also welcoming others who are contributing to the delivery of sustainable infrastructure. So if you're not an ISAP, don't feel like, that, like you can't attend if it's of interest to you. Um, the main day uh, and the gala dinner on the 3rd will be held at Eden Park, um, and that is both a face-to-face -face and a virtual event. Ticket registrations are open and we have um, sponsorship opportunities available and a really significant agenda um, that uh, has, been, has been developed hand in glove with the market on what is most important coming up uh, or or is being considered as part of um, uh, growing the work that's being done in respect to sustainable infrastructure. So if there's any interest there, we'd love to hear from you. QR code, if you, if you would like to know more, please um, scan and you'll go straight through um, to the site and you can uh, also speak to us, as I said, if you want to talk about any of the details surrounding those two occasions. Um, and I'd just like to, um, uh, just a bit of a teaser, uh, we're committed to Melbourne, really looking forward to holding ISC Connect uh, in, in the Victorian market. It will be September or October, and I would say almost with certainty that uh, we'll have details out to you in within the fortnight, fortnight, if not sooner. So thank you very much for that. Um, I'd like to hand over, uh, well, become a member for those of you who aren't already. Um, please join us. We uh, really look forward to bringing you on board and answering your questions. And if I can now hand over to Carolyn Gibbs, who will talk to you uh, about the work we're doing in policy and advocacy. 
Thanks, Jane. Um, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Carolyn Gibbs. I'm the Partnership Manager within our advocacy team. Um, just before I get started, a quick reminder, if you have any questions throughout the session, um, just enter them into the Q&A function at the bottom of your screen. We'll try to get to as many questions as possible during the session, um, and any that are still pending, we will answer um, after the session concludes. Um, if you can flip over, Danielle. Uh, so for those of you who don't know, the advocacy team sits within our engagement team um, and sits alongside our rating and technical team. Our main purpose is to look at how we can expand and accelerate uh, sustainability across the infrastructure industry uh, more broadly than just our rating scheme. Uh, so how we can partner with industry, with government, with our members um, and with the community to drive sustainable outcomes in infrastructure. We have four key areas that we look at, um, that being planet, people, prosperity, and industry. Um, a quick update on some of the things that we have completed to date. Next slide, please. Uh, so in November, we launched our 2022 impacts report. Uh, this is uh, a, a document which highlights the outcomes from both the infrastructure industry, uh, sorry, the infrastructure industry and the Infrastructure Sustainability Council. It's broken up into three sections. So the first part looks at the Infrastructure Sustainability Council um, and how we operate within the infrastructure industry. We then go into a section which looks at how we have delivered against our strategic goals, that being leadership, thriving industry, market transformation and organisational health, um, and in which we look at our ratings and certifications, our, in, our innovations, events, market transformation, our coalitions, um, and then organisational health is really an inwards look at how we're operating as an organisation. The third part of the impacts report looks at uh, case studies, so um, real life examples from across the industry, um, and they are contributed by our members um, on projects and, and partners throughout the, uh, throughout the industry, and really look at sustainability in action. Um, these slides will be shared after this presentation, um, so the link to the report is at the bottom for you, so you can click through and have a read at your leisure. Next slide, please. Um, another piece that we have completed recently is our 10 stories to celebrate 10 years. So in 2022, uh, the Infrastructure Sustainability Council celebrated 10 years of the IS rating tool. Um, and this ebook brings together lots of the stories from the beginning of, of the IS rating tool and how we've evolved and impacted the industry over the last 10 years. Um, there's some fantastic testimonials and some amazing stories um, of all of the people that have left their legacy on the ISC um, and also some of, the, um, some of the first projects and the first things that we have done throughout that time. Again, the link is at the bottom. So when you get the slide deck, you're able to click through and have a read at your leisure. Next slide, please. So an update on some of the things that we're working on at the moment. Uh, thought leadership is one way that we deliver impact across the industry. Uh, and it's a great way, a great example of how we partner with industry to, to really accelerate the thinking and, and explore some of those issues that are facing the industry. We're currently working on three thought leadership um, pieces with uh, partners across the industry. The first being with ACOM around how the Brisbane Olympics and Paralympic Games will be used as a catalyst for industry transformation. This is exploring, uh, is divided into three key sections around climate positive, resilience and nature-based solutions. The second thought leadership piece is with WSP um, and on, on social values and looking at how we value social values in our organisations and communities. And the third is with Deloitte looking at circular economy and looking at how circular economy can be applied through um, precinct and regional locations. Next slide, please. Um, and just lastly, as Jane has already alluded to, um, another way that we collaborate with industry and bring people together is through our member coalitions. Uh, so coalitions bring together the best and brightest minds from across the industry um, to really tackle some of the key issues that uh, we're facing at the moment within the industry, such as net zero or, re or resilience or inclusivity. We have four member coalitions, um, and as mentioned, there are a few spots still available if you'd like to join them. They are Climate Action, which is looking at accelerating climate, ac uh, climate action in every town, city and region through a place-based approach. Resilience is looking at how we can accelerate systemic resilience so that infrastructure can enable thriving, in thriving lifestyles, communities and nations. 
Um, modern slavery is looking at how we can eradicate modern slavery from the supply chain. And lastly, our circular economy coalition, which is looking at accelerating the transition to circular business models and economies. Um, last slide, please, Danielle. Uh, so the coalitions, like I said, they at the beginning, we look at um, their purpose and their scope and how that particular issue is relevant to infrastructure industry. We then go into developing a work plan and looking at how the impact can be delivered. And that's some examples there on the screen, looking at knowledge development, supporting implementation, industry engagement and impact delivery. Um, and lastly, they, the coalitions then support the industry by, um, by implementing those work plans and looking at how they can be measured and reported on. Um, for any information on any of the activities with advocacy, feel free to reach out to myself um, or the coalition's web uh, email address. Last slide, please. Um, so as mentioned, if you do have any questions, um, feel free to pop them into the Q&A. Um, we do have a few last minutes um, on the webinar, so I'm happy to take any of those questions now. Just if anyone is typing at the moment, I will just thank you all for your attendance today. It's been lovely to have you on the call. Um, the ISC is here to help you um, throughout your infrastructure um, journey. So please feel free to reach out to any of the team um, or the general ISC inquiry box. There will also be a survey that pops up on your screen after this session. So um, if you can please feel free to, um, to fill that in. Um, and if you do have any questions, feel free to reach out and we will answer those offline. There is a question that's come through, which is around the coalitions. Uh, so there is a coalition email, which is coalitions at iscouncil.org. Um, there is also an expression of interest form on the advocacy page of our website. So if you go into IS Council, the ISC website up on the top right hand side under advocacy is member coalitions. Fabulous. Thank you everyone for your attendance today. We look forward to seeing you again soon.